Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is quality control of glass as a packaging material. Let's see learning objectives. So after going through this video, learners will be able to understand quality control test to identify type of glass according to IP and USP that is Indian Pharmacopoeia and United States Pharmacopoeia. So start with selection of test according to USP 2015. So for determination of glass type, first test is glass grain test. Glass grain test usually used to distinguish type 1 that is borosilicate glass from type 2 and type 3 that is treated soda lime glass and soda lime silica glass. Now another two tests are surface glass test and surface etching test. So Surface glass test. So, surface glass test is used to determine high hydrolytic resistance glass. That is, type one and type two glass have higher hydrolytic resistance in comparison to type three container. So, surface glass test used to distinguish type one and type two from type three. Another is surface etching test. Surface etching test or comparison of glass grain test and surface glass test data. So, we have to find out that whether the hydrolytic resistance is due to inner surface treatment or due to chemical composition of the glass. So, what does that mean? So, type 1 is having high hydrolytic resistance due to its chemical composition and type 2 is having high hydrolytic resistance due to treatment with sulfur oxide. So, we have to differentiate that hydrolytic resistance is due to inner surface treatment or due to chemical composition and for that surface etching test is used. So, we can differentiate from type 1 glass from type 2 glass. So, first test is glass grain test. So, what is procedure for glass grain? So, as the name indicate glass grain test it means glass is broken and it is converted into grains or a smaller particle. Previously, this test was given as powder glass test in USP. So, start with the procedure. First, we have to rinse the container to be tested with a purified water and we need to press the product to produce two samples of about 100 gram each in pieces not more than 30 mm. Then after these samples are transferred to the ball mill, and then after crushing, it is to be transferred on sieve number 25 and sieve number 40. The material which retained on sieve number 25 and sieve number 40 is again returned to the ball mill for the fracture. After that, crushing again, they are passed through the sieve number 40 and sieve number 50. The sample which passed through sieve number 40 and retained on sieve number 50 are collected for the test. And those which pass through the 50, it is rejected. And again, which is having particle size greater than sieve number 40, they are again kept for the kept into ball mill for the size reduction. So here, basically, we have to collect the samples which are having particle size between sieve number 40 and sieve number 50. Next is after this, we have to remove any iron particles if present into a sample by passing the magnet over them. Then after we have to clean the particles, clean the grains. So for that we have to add 30 ml of acetone and we have to stir it. Then after stirring, we have to dry the grains. First by putting the beaker on a warm plate and then by heating it at 140 degree for drying. Continue with the test. So now the grains which are completely cleaned and dried 10 gram of the powder we have to take in two separate conical flasks and we have to add 15 ml of carbon dioxide pure, carbon dioxide free purified water into each flask. It will be considered as a test solution. So two conical flasks containing 10 gram in each will be serve as test solution. Next is in third conical flask we have to just pour 50 ml of carbon dioxide free purified water and it will be considered as a blank and it is all th this three conical flasks to be placed in autoclave 
एट हंड्रेड डिग्री सेल्सियस टू वन ट्वेंटी वन डिग्री सेल्सियस फॉर थर्टी मिनट नेक्स्ट इज वेन टेम्परेचर रीच टू रूम टेम्परेचर इमीजिएटली वी हैव टू एट जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव एम एल मिथाइल रेट एंड वी हैव टू टाइट्रेट इट अगेंस्ट जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू मोलर हाइड्रोक्लोरिक एसिड सो हाउ कैन वी डिफ्रेंशिएट टाइप ऑफ ग्लास फ्रॉम द टाइट्रेशन रेडिंग सो फॉर दैट वैल्यू इज गिवन अकॉर्डिंग टू द यू एस पी सो इफ इट इज टाइप वन ग्लास इट शुड नॉट कंज्यूम मोर देन पॉइंट वन एम एल ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू मोलर एच सी एल दैट मीन्स वेन वी परफॉर्म टाइट्रेशन अमाउंट ऑफ टाइट्रन शुड नॉट बी मोर देन पॉइंट वन एम एल पर ग्राम नॉट फॉर टेन ग्राम ऑफ द ग्लास सो इफ वी कंसिडर एज वी हैव टेकन टेन ग्राम ऑफ ग्लास सो रीडिंग शुड नॉट बी मोर देन वन एम एल सेम एज दैट फॉर टाइप टू एंड टाइप थ्री ग्लास इट शुड नॉट बी मोर देन पॉइंट एटी फाइव दैट मीन्स इफ रीडिंग डज नॉट कंप्लाई विथ इट वी नीड टू रिपीट द टेस्ट एंड फॉर दैट पॉमिसिबल रेंज इज ऑल्सो गिवन सो इफ मीन ऑफ कंजम्पन ऑफ एच सी एल इज नॉट मोर देन टेन दैट मीन्स इफ इट इज अप टू जीरो पॉइंट टेन एम एल नाउ वेर दिस मीन कम्स फ्रॉम सो एज यू नो दैट वी हैव टेकन टू टेस्ट सोल्यूशन दैट मीन्स वी हैव यूज टू टेन ग्राम ऑफ सैंपल इन अ टू डिफरेंट कॉनिकल फ्लास्क एंड विल टाइट्रेट दैट टू सोल्यूशन सो विल बी हैविंग टू रीडिंग्स टेस्ट वन एंड टेस्ट टू and we have to subtract the value of blank from both and then we have to take the mean of test 1 and test 2 and from the mean if that mean if it is not more than 0.1 in that case it the difference in a reading between test 1 and test 2 it should not be more than 25% if it is between 0.10 to 0.20 if the mean value of test 1 and test 2 is 0.10 to 0.20 difference in a, a test 1 reading and test 2 reading from the mean should not be more than 20% and same as not less than 0.20 that means greater than 0.20 ml 10% of the mean permissible range from test 1 to test 2 it is 10% of the mean now move to next test surface glass test so for surface glass test we have to take six dry vials or a bottles from the sample lot and three if their capacity exceeds 100 ml that means if capacity of the container is greater than 100 ml we have to take three samples and less than that we have to take six samples the containers are to be filled with a carbon dioxide free water up to the filling volume so what do you mean by filling volume so filling volume indicated in this diagram so this up to this level we have to fill the container after that each container including ampule shall be loosely capped with an inert material such as dish of natural glass or aluminium foil and we have to carry out the autoclaving procedure as described for the glass drain test except the temperature is to be maintained at 121 degree celsius for 60 minutes transfer the same volume of carbon dioxide free water to be used as a blank once autoclave attain the room temperature we have to titrate the solution with 0.01 molar hcl using 0.05 molar methyl red as indicator per 25 ml of solution the volume of hcl which is consumed by the solution it is the amount of alkaline oxide present into glass container which are leached into test solution so this is the limitation for number of titration and volume of test liquid so if container volume is not more than 3 ml that is for up to 3 ml the minimum volume of titration is 25 ml and we have to perform one titration so if it is between 3 to 30 volume of test liquid required is 50 ml and we have to repeat two titration same as about 30 to 100 100 ml of titration volume two titration and not less than 100 that is more than 100 ml 100 ml of titration volume and three titration and this is the value for type 1 and type 2 glass and for type 3 glass which indicate amount of hcl per 100 ml of solution so this is about surface glass test next test is surface etching 
test. So surface etching test, we have to repeat the same procedure as that of the surface glass test for cleaning. And another extra step is we have to rinse the container twice with water and we have to fill it with one volume of hydrofluoric acid and nine volume of hydrochloric acid. And after rinsing the container with hydrofluoric and hydrochloric acid solution, we have to empty the container and we have to rinse it with the five times with water immediately before the test. And after that, we have to follow the same procedure that we have to pour the water into a container and we have to keep it for autoclaving and then we have to pull it and we have to titrate it with the HCl. So what is purpose of washing with hydrofluoric acid and hydrochloric acid? So when we rinse the container with hydrofluoric acid and hydrochloric acid, so if treatment is done, in inner surface of the glass, treatment get washed off. So, as in initially first slide, we discussed that whether hydrolytic resistance is due to inner treatment or due to chemical composition. So, if hydrolytic resistance is due to chemical composition, it does not get washed off with hydrofluoric and hydrochloric acid solution. But if the hydrolytic resistance is due to surface treatment, it get washed off with HF and HCl solution. So by this we can identify whether the glass is type 2 glass or type 1 glass and we can confirm the data of glass grain test that means con comparison of glass grain test. Now next is integrated testing of glass material according to IP 2018. Type 1 and type 2 glass container can be distinguished from type 3 glass container from test 1 that is surface test. Type 1 and type 2 glass can be differentiated by using test 1 and test 2. So same as type 1 glass is having high hydrolytic resistance due to its chemical composition and type 2 glass is having hydrolytic resistance due to its inner treatment. So start with first test hydrolytic resistance of glass containers. So procedure for the test 1 is we have to rinse the container three times with carbon dioxide free water and we have to fill the volume according to their filling capacity and we have to cover the vials or a bottle with aluminium foil and we have to keep it in autoclave. Number of containers that is to be used for the testing it is given over here. If nominal capacity is up to 3 ml we have to take at least 20 containers and volume of test solution should be 25. Same as or less at least 10 and volume of the solution should be 50 ml 6 to 30 minimum 5 container more than 30 at least 3 container and volume of titration should be 100 ml so according to we have to select the container we have to rinse it and we have to fill it with the water and we have to keep it in autoclave now we have to heat the autoclave at 100 degrees celsius for 10 minutes and as the temperature rise from 100 to the 120 degrees Celsius, we have to keep it over 20 minutes and at 121 degrees Celsius, we have to keep it for 60 minutes. We have to lower the temperature from 121 to 100 degree over 40 minutes by venting to prevent the vacuum. Once it attained the room temperature, we have to collect the test solution according to the limitation and we have to titrate it against 0.01 ml, 0.01 molar. HCl using methyl red as indicator and blank also we have to perform with water and difference between blank and back titration is calculated and amount of HCl consumed by test solution is calculated. After titration we have to compare the amount of HCl consumed per 100 ml of test solution in this given table. So according to that, we have to identify the volume and we have to check whether it is type 1 or type 2 glass and whether it is type 3 glass. Now next is test 2. So test 2 is same as that of the test 1. Basic difference is we have to wash the container with 4% volume by volume hydrofluoric acid. So difference between IP and USP is in IP in surface etching test we took 9 parts of HCl and 1 part of HF. But here we have to just take 4% volume by volume of hydrofluoric acid and we have 
and we have to follow the rest of the procedure as that of the test one. And after that, we have to titrate it against 0.01 molar HCl, and we have to compare the data. So, how can we differentiate type one glass from type two glass using hydrolytic resistance test two? So, when we wash it with a hydrofluoric acid, inner treatment get washed off. So, whatever reading we got in test one, if it get increased for test two, that indicates that it is type two glass and hydrolytic resistance is due to inner treatment and it is not due to its chemical composition. So, if there is increase in a reading, it indicates it is type two glass and already type three glass is confirmed with the first reading. If it is having a higher reading as it is given in a table, it indicates that it is already type three. But if difference is produced in reading of type 1 to type 2 glass, it indicates type 2 glass is present. Next is arsenic test. So, procedure for arsenic test is we have to prepare a test solution as it is described in hydrolytic resistance test and we have to take adequate number of samples to produce 50 ml of test solution. Then after we have to take 10 ml of solution from the collected sample and we have to add 10 ml of nitric acid and we have to keep it on water bath for the dryness and after the dry residue we have to keep it in oven at 130 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Allow it to cool and then add 10 ml of hydrogen molybeth reagent. Then dissolve and heat it under water bath and reflux for 20 minutes. Cool to the room temperature and determine absorbance at 840 nanometer and 10 ml of hydrogen molybdate reagent is used as a blend. The absorbance of test solution should not exceed the absorbance obtained by repeating the determination of using 0.1 ml arsenic standard solution that is 10 ppm of standard arsenic solution we have to use and absorbance should not exceed than the standard test solution. These are the references. And with this, I conclude my video. Thank you everyone for watching my video.